Hey guys, it's Sebastian here from the Noble Frugal Studio, and today I'm gonna to show you how to animate from start to finish in OpenTunes 1.6. Let's get started. So today I'm using the Artist 16 second generation from XP Pen. They sent this to me for this video, so huge thank you to them. They have this new adjustable stand that can fold up so you can store it easily. Anyway, let's start animating. When you open up OpenTunes, you'll get a screen just like the one you see before me. So let's start by making a new scene inside OpenTunes. So by default, your current project is gonna be set to sandbox. And for this tutorial, that's fine. You don't have to change anything. I'm just gonna put this in my tutorials project because as a YouTuber, I have to stay organized, but you can keep it in the sandbox. I'm gonna name this project. Oh, <laughs> looks like Windows brought up the, the tablet writing setting. So why not, we'll write. Um, I'll name this animation process. Cool. Oh, and it made the project for me. Okay. Um, I got to go back now. We just set our project width to 1920 and our height to 1080. The frame rate's at 24 frames per second. And our units are pixels. Make sure that you have those settings before you hit OK. Thank you, Windows. Let's start by creating a new layer. I'm gonna go down to this timeline and right click and select new level. I'm going to select tunes raster level from the drop down menu and make sure your width and height are 3000 by 3000 and hit okay. All right, now we can draw when you select this brush tool up here or you can just hit B on your keyboard. Also open tunes and Windows Ink do not like each other. So if you have Windows Ink turned on in your tablet driver settings, try turning that off while using open tunes and then your drawing performance will be a lot better. All right, I'm gonna pick a brush and start drawing. Hovering over to the style editor, I'm gonna go to the raster section, scroll all the way down, then I'm gonna pick the sketch one brush. Open tunes tends to crash a lot, so just head up to file and then click save all. Save often guys and you will thank me later. Let's sketch out our animation. So I think I'm just gonna do a simple walk cycle. Just gonna tap the side of this to and drag down to set a ground for myself. And I'm gonna hit Control S to save. Now let's go on to the second keyframe. So I'm just gonna tap the frame that comes next and then start drawing and it'll automatically create a new frame. If you don't wanna do that, you can just hit D on the keyboard. All right, since I wanna see the drawing that I just drew, I'm gonna, I'm gonna right click with the mouse and hit activate onion skin. I'm really going for a very, you know, chibi style almost like a video game character animation. I'm gonna hit that first frame, grab the select tool. I'm gonna set it to freehand, select the drawing, then I'm gonna hit control C, go to frame two, then hit control V. Now I'm gonna turn off the onion skin. <clears throat> and for this frame, I'm just gonna switch the arms and legs. Easy as that. So this frame, the body is gonna show here. And then it's gonna be like this. I'm going for something really, really simple because I'm trying to keep this video as straightforward as possible. Cool, I'm gonna delete that frame we made earlier. Then I'm going to click on the first frame. Actually, I'm gonna hit save again. I'm gonna grab this little tab and drag it to the right, select the frame, and then start drawing to automatically create a new frame. Turn on the onion skin. And I'm gonna go for the passing position. So this is just gonna be slightly higher than the contact poses I just drew, the other, key, the other key frames. So I'm gonna go for just making it slightly higher. I'm not going for anything super advanced today. It's just a simple walk cycle. So everything's gonna be slightly higher.
I want to make sure I'm following an arc with this hand movement, almost like a pendulum swinging. Alright, so I opted in to go for something really, really simple. So it's almost like his legs are sliding on the ground because I'm really going for that um, very simplified, almost like a game animation. So with all our core drawings down, uh, we can move on. I'm gonna space out these drawings on the timeline. I'm gonna click and drag to select all our frames. Right click, reframe, let's do in fours. I'm gonna hit loop. So we need another passing pose at the end in order for this thing to loop correctly. Since I want them to be the same frame, I'm actually not gonna copy the drawing, I'm gonna copy the frame. So I'm gonna select the frame, hit Control C, then hit Control V on the timeline. So now we actually have the same frame here, and I can click and drag this little tab to increase the exposure of that. And what will happen is if I, if I draw on frame two over here, it'll keep those changes on the frame two over here. So th that's what I want, so. We're all set. Hit loop. Now we have our little chibi walking animation. I'm gonna space these out just a, a bit more. Maybe each one would get six frames. So this will be on 12, oops. This will be on 12, there you go. Just gonna space these out, 18, and this one, and the one 24. Let's see. Yeah, I like this timing way better. Let's do some line art. So I'm gonna double click this column one and then name it sketch. And I'm gonna tap this icon right here to create a new tunes raster level with the same settings and I'm gonna hit okay. Hit save. Now I'm probably gonna opt in to use the default open tunes brush. I actually do quite like it for line art. All right, I'm just gonna tap this little arrow next to the sketch layer. I'm gonna drag the opacity down, maybe to 36. There you go. Go back to our second layer. We're gonna name this, double tap, lines, final, since we're gonna be putting colors on there too. Save, and I'm gonna go forward with the line art. Make sure to put your smoothness at least up to 10 if you want some really smooth lines. I won't have to worry too much about consistency because I'm really going to be copying these drawings and using them for the other frames. Just gotta make sure that this first one looks right. I'm gonna flip the canvas by hitting this little triangle here. The lines on the inside are gonna be thinner than the lines on the outside, with the exception of the eyes. Hit this button to hide the sketch. See if we've gotten everything. It looks pretty good. I'm just gonna erase some of these uh, sketch lines. Make it look a little cleaner. I'm gonna get rid of this little part of the eye. Don't really need it. It's good to be as simple as possible for this style. Hit save. Okay, I'm gonna stretch out my exposure to the fit the sketch frame's length. And we're gonna go to my other contact pose and then start drawing to create a new frame. I'm just gonna copy this one. So go to the select tool, select it, control C, go to the next frame, control V. And we'll just make, we'll just erase and make corrections for this one. All right, let's go for that frame in the middle. Draw to create a frame. I'm just gonna take the head from this one and copy it onto that new drawing. Gotta be really careful in the middle there. All right, take everything. I did. Control C, go in the middle, Control V. Select it again and I'm just gonna use the keyboard to move it. Good to me. All 
All right, lastly, we're just gonna copy this frame two again and paste it right here. Okay, it looks like a duplicated two and three, so I'm just gonna click and drag to select all these frames, hit delete on my keyboard, click the two, and drag the exposure back to where it's supposed to be. Hit loop. Looks awesome. I'm gonna change this to a bit of a smile. In this passing frame, the head is too far from the body, so I'm gonna go to select, select rectangular. I'm gonna select it with the box, I'm gonna use the arrow keys, hit down. There you go. Does that work out? Works out to me. Let's draw in those lines on the shorts. Need the onion skin for that, there you go. Let's add some colors. Coming over here, we have the level palette and the style editor on top. So I'm just gonna hit this plus icon and select a new color. Also make sure that you have this auto option checked. Just using the fill bucket, and it's set to normal to fill in these spaces with color. Add another color, let's go for a red. What's cool about OpenTunes is after you've added a color, as long as you have it selected, you can change it on the fly. Got these little gaps I wanna fill in. I'm gonna set the fill bucket tool to freehand and just circle where I want to fill in. I also wanna fill in these eyes with a lighter color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new color. I'm gonna set it to sort of a very noticeable pink. Let's go to settings and I'm gonna check auto paint for lines. Then I'm just gonna draw the area that I want. the border for the eyes to be. Then I'm gonna take this light blue color, go to the fill bucket, set it to normal, and fill it in. I'm gonna create a new color that's sort of a gray. And that's what we'll use for the hair. All right, let's color the next frame. I'm actually just gonna take the head from the first frame. I'm gonna select it. Hit Control C, then go to the third frame and hit Control V. You know, in hindsight, we probably could have done that for the passing frame too, but that's fine. Now let's hide that sketch layer, hit loop, and we're done. Now I'm gonna show you how you can export your animation so you can share it online or send it to your friends. Let's go to render, hit output settings. This window will come up. It's gonna save within your outputs folder in the sandbox project of your OpenTunes directory. I'll show you how to get there after. So the name is animation process. Let's change this to a GIF. If you don't have the options GIF and MP4, click the card to see my video on how you can export using GIF and MP4 in OpenTunes. Otherwise, you probably have AVI, which will export it as an AVI movie file. I'm gonna use GIF. Oh, but there's actually one more thing I have to do before I render this. Close this window. Let's go to X sheet and hit scene settings. Now the camera background color appears white here, but it's actually a transparent alpha color. So if we want it to be truly white and not show up strange when we export, we have to drag this alpha slider all the way up to 255. And now when we export, our background will actually be white. So let's go back to render, hit output settings. This looks all good and we'll hit render. All right, now that's done, let's go find it. So click on this PC if you're on Windows. You probably have OpenTunes installed on your local disk, so click there. Go to OpenTunes Stuff, Sandbox, Outputs, and your project should be here. But since I made my project in the Tutorials project, I'm gonna go to Projects, Tutorials, Outputs, and here is my animation. What you'll notice is that even though we hid the sketch lines, we forgot to hide the sketch lines in the render. Let's fix that. Go back to the program. And so we hid the sketch lines 
in the viewer, but when we click render, they're still there, even if we hide them. All we have to do is click this eyeball here and it hides them in the render. Let's go to render and hit render to fix the animation. Now when we view the file, there are no sketch lines behind our animation. And that is how you animate from start to finish in OpenTunes. So there's a lot more I'd like to do for this animation, but we'll save it for next time. We can add some squash and stretch to make the movement more appealing, some light shading, and maybe even a scrolling background behind our character. So be sure to tune in next time for all of that. Thank you guys for watching until the end because I have some gifts for you. XP Pen is offering you guys 15% off the Artist 16 second gen and a free USB-C cable with the codes in the description below. Huge thank you to XP Pen for today's collab. Working with you guys has always been cool over the years and I really appreciate it. Thank you. With that said, I'll see you all next time. Happy animating.